The banana industry has a dark history involving violence, political upheavals, and covert dealings with the CIA. At one point, the world's largest banana company acted like a de facto government in Central America, controlling vast land and infrastructure. They played a role in overthrowing presidents who advocated for workers' rights and installed leaders who favored the banana company's profits. This is the unsettling true story of the banana business. Sam, known as the Banana Man, who went from being a penniless immigrant to a major player in the banana business. In this episode, we will delve into the darker turn of the story, as Sam becomes associated with a company called United Fruit. From banana empire to corporate scandal, the rise and fall of United Fruit Company, a gripping tale of power, politics, and the fruit that shaped nations. To reduce taxes and fees, Sam had engaged in shady dealings with government officials in Honduras. However, when those officials seemed to backtrack on their agreements, Sam faced a crisis. In the late 1800s, Honduras had initiated an ambitious national railroad project funded by loans from British banks. The project ran out of money before completion, leaving the country heavily indebted. By 1900, Honduras owed around $100 million to British banks, a staggering sum. The United States was concerned that European military intervention to collect the debt might violate the Monroe Doctrine, necessitating U.S. involvement. To avoid this, they enlisted the help of J.P. Morgan, a powerful banker, to refinance the debt. J.P. Morgan's solution was for him to buy Honduras' outstanding railroad bonds, refinance the debt, and issue new loans. In return, he asked for ownership of the Honduran railroad system and the right for his bank to collect taxes on all imports to Honduras. This proposal benefited various parties, including the British banks getting their loans repaid and avoiding military conflict. However, it did not sit well with Sam and other business owners who relied on tax breaks and concessions from the Honduran government. Sam's business model depended on these concessions and exemptions from import duties, allowing him to keep costs low. But J.P. Morgan made it clear that such deals would no longer be honored, increasing Sam's costs significantly and endangering his business. In response, Sam embarked on a plan to overthrow the Honduran government and install a new president who would uphold his tax breaks and concessions. Sam stirred up public outrage by portraying the Americans as money-grabbing intruders who would exploit the country. He secretly met with Manuel Bonilla, a former Honduran president with whom he struck a deal. Sam built a mercenary army, led by Bonilla's right-hand man, Lee Christmas. This army, funded and organized by Sam, arrived in Honduras in September 1910, overthrowing the government and installing Bonilla as the new president. In return, Bonilla honored all the concessions and tax breaks Sam desired, securing Sam's interests. Sam's actions had far-reaching consequences, and he effectively controlled the destiny of a foreign nation to protect his banana business interests. With these concessions secured, Sam had everything he needed to challenge United Fruit. For years, United Fruit had dominated the banana industry, with a significant influence in Central America. They controlled land, infrastructure, and workers, often acting as a de facto government. They employed various marketing strategies to popularize bananas and created the iconic Miss Chiquita character. However, Sam's business, GML Fruit, was growing and posed a significant threat to United Fruit's dominance. Tensions between the two companies escalated, leading to a banana war with both sides engaged in aggressive tactics. Sam managed to outmaneuver United Fruit on several occasions, acquiring land and resources that United Fruit believed belonged to them. The conflict escalated to the brink of war, with both companies even arming their ships. Concerned about the potential political and economic fallout, the U.S. government intervened and initiated peace negotiations between the two companies. Eventually, they proposed a merger to end the hostilities, creating one dominant force in the banana industry. In 1929, Chiamel Fruit merged with United Fruit, making Sam one of the wealthiest individuals in the country. Despite his retirement from the banana trade and a non-compete clause, Sam's involvement in the banana industry left an indelible mark on its history. In 1928, workers at United Fruits in Colombia initiated a strike to demand better working conditions, such as a six-day work week and payment in actual money, rather than food coupons. United Fruits opposed these demands and sought assistance from the U.S. government, claiming the strike could lead to a communist uprising. The U.S. government pressured Colombia to suppress the strike, Colombian soldiers were ordered to deal with the striking workers, leading to a massacre where up to 2,000 people were killed. This incident was initially portrayed as necessary to prevent communism, but later revealed as a brutal attack on workers seeking fair conditions. In the midst of this historical account, Sam, 
who had retired but was invested in United Fruits, noticed declining profits due to economic factors and labor unrest. He attempted to address the company's issues through various means, including presenting solutions to the board of directors and ultimately gathering proxy votes to take control of the company. With Sam now in charge, he made significant changes to improve the company's efficiency and profitability, including empowering local workers, optimizing shipping practices, diversifying products, and reassessing property values. Despite his efforts, the banana industry faced challenges like banana diseases, with Panama disease threatening the dominant banana variety, the Big Mike, leading to the eventual switch to the Cavendish variety. Amid these concerns, the outbreak of World War II presented a new set of challenges, making Sam's efforts to save the company even more daunting. Following the outbreak of World War II in 1939, the British government banned banana shipments to Britain and its colonies as a cost-saving measure, effectively removing 20% of United Fruit's market overnight. The United States, too, began limiting banana imports due to the war, leading to further challenges. Some of United Fruit's ships were seized for military use, and those that weren't faced attacks as they became indistinguishable from warships. Sam, the former head of United Fruit, responded by diversifying into different crops, focusing on essential wartime needs. He aimed to mitigate the impact of the war on the company. Despite these efforts, the challenges of banana diseases like Panama disease persisted. After the war in 1947, Guatemala allowed banana workers to join trade unions and implemented labor reforms that threatened United Fruit's business model. These reforms led to tensions between the Guatemalan government and United Fruit, culminating in President Arbenz's decree in 1952, allowing the government to reclaim uncultivated land from large landowners like United Fruit. In response, United Fruit launched a campaign to portray Arbenz as a communist threat, gaining support from the U.S. government. The CIA initiated Operation PB Success to overthrow Arbenz's government and installed a more favorable leader for American interests. However, the fallout from these actions caused resentment and civil unrest in Guatemala. United Fruit regained control of the land, but faced increased scrutiny. To distance themselves from the company's involvement, the U.S. government filed an antitrust lawsuit against United Fruit in 1955. The lawsuit resulted in a settlement in 1958, requiring United Fruit to sell some of its fields to create competition and mark the beginning of the company's decline. In 1951, Sam decided to part ways with United Fruit. Upon his retirement, he sold all his stock in the company. He did so partly to make a clean break from the business, but also because he had doubts about how his wealth was being managed. His decision turned out to be prescient, as United Fruit faced even greater challenges after his departure, entering a prolonged period of decline. During his later years, Sam was committed to philanthropy, using his wealth to build hospitals, roads, and other infrastructure projects, aiming to leave a positive legacy. However, he was also acutely aware of the harm caused by some of United Fruit's actions. In a moment of reflection, he confessed feeling guilt about some of the company's past deeds, recognizing that their primary focus had been on generating dividends. Sam Samurai passed away at the age of 84, having battled Parkinson's disease. After his death, United Fruit's decline accelerated. In 1959, Fidel Castro nationalized all United Fruit properties and plantations in Cuba, resulting in significant losses for the company, totaling around $60 million. United Fruit attempted to orchestrate an uprising against Castro by collaborating with the CIA in the ill-fated Bay of Pigs invasion. However, this operation was poorly planned and ended in failure, with casualties and prisoners taken. United Fruit, once an unstoppable force and a puppet master with a firm grip on entire nations, had become weakened, inefficient, and suffered from declining profits. Its influential leaders had departed, and the company's brand and reputation had deteriorated significantly. United Fruit grappled with the rampant spread of Panama disease, decimating its main product, the Big Mike Banana, by the 1960s. Another company, Standard Fruit, surged ahead in the market by offering the Cavendish Banana, immune to Panama disease. United Fruit lost its long-standing dominance in the banana industry and appeared directionless. Over the years, United Fruit underwent multiple ownership changes in an attempt to salvage the business, but success remained elusive. In an effort to distance itself from its troubled history and start anew, one of its owners rebranded the company as Chiquita. Given the company's association with controversial incidents, a rebrand seemed like a logical step. However, more scandals continued to plague the company. For example, in the 1970s, its chairman, Eli Black, tragically ended his life by jumping from a New York skyscraper after the exposure of corruption within the company. 
It was revealed that he had authorized bribes to reduce United Fruit's tax liabilities. Even in more recent times, Chiquita, as the company became known, faced controversy. In 2007, it was fined $25 million by the U.S. Department of Justice for making payments to a terrorist organization in Colombia. While the company still exists today, its days of dominance in the banana market are a distant memory. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Business Central. We hope you enjoy delving into the fascinating world of business with us. Stay connected with us, like, comment, subscribe to our channel, and click that notification bell so you won't miss a video. See you in the next one.